Budget day is looming with Chancellor Rachel Reeves set to outline dramatic changes to the UK's pensions, taxes and benefits. Outside of the Winter Fuel Payment Act, this is Labour's first big fiscal statement since returning to power. So who's expected to win or lose from Rachel Reeves' announcement on October the 30th? Inheritance tax. An inheritance tax rate could be on the cards in the autumn budget as Rachel Reeves hopes to generate more revenue for the government. Stevie Heaford, a tax partner at HW Fisher, has described the levy as one of Britain's most unpopular taxes. The tax is charged on someone's estate, including their money, possessions or property, once they pass away. It's levied at 40% and comes into effect if the deceased's estate is valued above the £325,000 threshold. It's not paid if the value of someone's estate is below the £325,000 threshold, or if they leave everything above the £325,000 threshold to a spouse, a civil partner, charity or community amateur sports club. Sakia Starmer and the Chancellor are reportedly floating multiple changes to inheritance taxes, several exemptions and relief, as opposed to directly raising its rate. Taxpayers could reduce their liability by making gifts seven years before their death, or through business relief or agricultural relief for inheritance tax. Ahead of this month's budget, the Treasury has refused to comment on speculation, but ministers are understood to be exploring ways to plug a £40 billion shortfall in public finances. Recently, analysts have scrutinised the tax due to thousands finding themselves pulled into higher tax brackets because of ex-Chancellor Jeremy Hunt's decision to freeze allowances until 2028. Heaford added the decision by the government to freeze this figure until 2028 rather than increase it in line with inflation means that many people have found themselves caught in the inheritance tax trap for the first time. National insurance. National insurance could rise for millions of businesses despite Sakia Starmer's pledge to not raise taxes on working people. In recent weeks, government ministers have sidestepped the question over the rate paid on employer contributions being raised come October the 30th. Earlier this year, the national insurance rate for employees was slashed twice for 27 million workers, from 12% to 10%, and then again to 8%. Rumours of a potential tax hike have been slammed by the private sector as a tax on jobs as the economy continues to recover post-COVID. While the Prime Minister has claimed that Labour will stand by its promise to not increase taxes on working people, it is understood employers will not come under this group's banner. As it stands, businesses pay national insurance of 13.8% on a worker's earnings above £175 per week. Neil Insull, a partner at business advisory firm Blick Rothenberg, warned a tax rise won't get Britain working and would be counterproductive to Labour's goal of economic growth. If Labour does want to see more people in work, then they should beware creating what has been called a tax on jobs and instead focus on reducing the tax gap and giving HMRC the funding it needs to do this, rather than putting even more pressure on British businesses. Benefit cuts. Over 400,000 claimants of sickness benefits are at risk of losing their benefits in plans which are being drawn up by the Chancellor. It's understood Rachel Reeves is looking to reform DWP work capability rules in a move that will affect recipients of payments such as personal independence payment. Benefit claimants currently on long-term sick leave would be reassessed as needing to prepare for employment by 2028-29. These cuts are reportedly a part of a £3 billion saving target that Rachel Reeves wants to meet to cut excess spending. A government spokesperson previously claimed that the current work capability rules are not working. Government ministers are preparing to work alongside GPs and bring in jobs coaches to visit mental health patients in hospitals to get people back into work. Work and Pension Secretary Liz Kendall has claimed that trial runs of employment advisers giving CV and interview advice in hospitals can lead to dramatic results. However, this proposal has come under fire from some disabilities rights campaigners. James Taylor, the executive director of Strategy, a disability equality charity Scope, called for evidence from the government that job coaches being sent on visits will not cause distress to patients. Capital gains tax. Reports suggest Britons should prepare for capital gains tax to be raised in the budget later this month, but homeowners could be given some much needed relief. 
Labour ministers have opted to leave the tax levied on the sale of second homes and buy-to-let properties untouched. It's understood this is due to anxieties that raising the rate would cost money instead. The top rate of capital gains tax for properties fell from 28% to 24% under the Conservatives in their last budget. According to the OBR's forecasts at the time, this reduction would generate almost £700 million by raising the number of property sales and consequent income from stamp duty. However, concerns have been raised that a rate hike on properties would result in slowing property sales, which will hurt the Treasury's pockets. Under the levy, tax is paid on the profit made when an asset which has increased in value is sold. This includes houses, assets and shares, all paid between 20 and 28%. However, the Prime Minister has hinted capital gains tax on the sale of shares and other assets, which are currently charged at 20%, will be raised come October the 30th. Speculation is rife that Rachel Reeves is preparing a pensions tax raid which will negatively impact millions in her upcoming statement. As it stands, savers were able to withdraw 25% of the amount in their pension pot without paying tax. That was up to a limit of £268,275. However, The Telegraph has reported ministers have asked one of the UK's top pension providers to assess the consequences of cutting the tax-free lump sum to £100,000. Think tanks, including the Institute of Fiscal Studies and the Fabian Society, have called for the allowance to be slashed to this amount, claiming the status quo favours wealthier households. It's also been suggested that the tax-free withdrawal rate could be slashed to 20% in this month's budget. Becky O'Connor, the Director of Public Affairs at Pension B, warned that any drastic changes to tax-free withdrawals could be detrimental to those approaching retirement. The £100,000 cap that has been rumoured would be a low threshold and would mean that anyone with a total pension of £400,000 or more would be impacted, she explained. So a cut of this magnitude would negatively affect millions of middle-income retirees and would cause those on the cusp of retirement significant difficulty with decision-making. Stamp duty. Households could be slapped with a £2,500 bill thanks to a rumoured upcoming reform to stamp duty. A scheme that cuts the cost of the levy is set to be scrapped by the Chancellor as part of her fiscal statement. As a result, the cost of buying a property based on the average sale price for England will go up by thousands of pounds. If introduced, many first-time buyers will face another hurdle getting on the property ladder. Scrapping the discount will result in 309,000 more purchases annually being subject to the tax. Under former Prime Minister Liz Truss, the house price threshold at which stamp duty is paid rose from £300,000 to £425,000. It was introduced temporarily to assist people in buying a home for the first time and is set to expire next April. Adam Corlett, a principal economist at the Resolution Foundation, has described stamp duty as a fundamentally bad tax and urged Rachel Reeves to look elsewhere in raising revenue. Watch this space on the 30th of October.